demanding answers and wants to question under oath the two men who led the State Department's investigation of the Benghazi terror attack. He is California Congressman Darrell Issa. He's a Republican and chairman of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Uh, Mr. Chairman, first let me ask you what you made of the president's remarks earlier this morning. Well, only the president could tell us with a straight face that there's never been any confusion and that from the beginning they said the right thing. Uh, you obviously I did know to be the truth. Uh, and he was doing that on behalf of the president. So the president can't have it both ways. He can, can't say that it, he's always been honest and then, in fact, have uh, people such as uh, Ambassador Stevens himself in real time as he's being attacked saying to his number two, Greg, we're under attack. Or Gregory uh, Hicks himself telling uh, the operations center at state within minutes that it's a, it's a terrorist attack. And he knew from the get-go it was. So as you go through the, the facts as they were, yes, in real time, we knew this was an Al-Qaeda-backed terrorist attack. And everything else in between is simply revisionist history. Because the president came out and said that no one, no one understood uh, what was happening in the first few days or when it was happening, and you're challenging that here. I want to ask you about that, that soundbite we played in, in setting up James Rosen's hit, where he says, we, we, the White House, were the ones who gave those emails that Steve Hayes got his hands on and that John Carl got his hands on to these congressional committees months ago. And he omits the pronoun, but he says, and determined that there was nothing afoul of the process we had used. And he says there's no there there. He basically says you, you on, in Congress gave him a pass on these emails months ago. Well, this is an interesting story, and it, it's sort of a use of, of careful words. First of all, it's not committees, as I understand it. It's committee. My committee didn't have those. Uh, it was delivered to the committee that has exclusive jurisdiction over sources and methods. In other words, covert activities as though there were secrets in there. They were told they could look at it, but then the agreement was it wouldn't go anywhere else. So when they're looking at, quote, what did the CIA know and when did they know it, they were looking at it in one role where you and I look at this unclassified or should be unclassified information, and we realize that it's just plain a cover-up. In that same statement, the president said, um, he said, number one, five to six days after Susan Rice, uh, he said, I, he said, by the way, her talking points pretty much match my presidential daily briefing. And keep in mind that two to three days after Susan Rice appeared, I sent up the head of our National Counterterrorism Center, Matt Olson, to Capitol Hill and specifically said it was an act of terrorism. No pronoun there again. He says, and specifically said it was an act of terrorism, but that is what Matt Olson said. So he says, how could I be covering up something when I sent Matt Olson up to Capitol Hill to testify that it was an act of terrorism? Your thoughts? Well, first of all, the president sent a letter to the president of Libya where he didn't call it a terrorist attack, even uh, when in real time the president of Libya was calling this a pre-planned September 11th terrorist attack. So I think when you look at official correspondence from the president, through the acting ambassador to the president of Libya, which came out in our hearing and was testified to under oath, the words that are being used carefully, like you just said, act of terror, an act of terror is different than a terrorist attack. The truth is, it, this was a terrorist attack. This had Al-Qaeda at it. This came over the wall very quickly, attacked and killed two people, and then later two more hours later. Ambassador Stevens in real time told his number two, while he was being attacked, Greg, we're under attack. There were pre-planned attacks beforehand, including blowing out a piece of the wall at this, at this diplomatic facility in Benghazi. That, that information was denied in real time to the American people. Here's the real point, though, and the one that our committee's trying to get to. There were three fundamental mistakes. They said they, had, they needed more security, they got less security. They began being attacked and were attacked for more than seven hours and were to believe that no response could even be started that could have helped them seven hours later. Quite frankly, you can take off from Washington, D.C. on a commercial flight and practically be in Benghazi by the end of seven hours. You certainly can take off from areas of the Mediterranean and, and bring at least yeah. some support in less than seven hours. And then lastly, the American people deserve real-time information and other State Department assets deserve the same thing. Remember, there could have been a similar terrorist attack at another embassy or consulate and they were not being prepared 
for what Understood. would have been a pre-planned Al-Qaeda attack. A couple more questions I want to get through to you. Hillary Clinton, of sure. course, testified she knew nothing about the lack of security, the requests that have been made for security and had been denied by her underlings. Um, now, the, vi the former Vice President of the United States, Dick Cheney, has been pushing for you guys to subpoena her because we find out now that the head of the these two guys who ran the uh, review of the State Department didn't think it was important to talk to the Secretary of State. So no one's... Uh, no one who, who was responsible for that review talked to her. You guys had her testify on Capitol Hill before, but my question to you is, does she get subpoenaed now? And is she, what do you make of the fact that either she, she did know about the refusals uh, of security, or as she testified, she just had no idea about any of this? And what does that leave us to conclude about our former Secretary of State? Well, I think we can certainly believe that she was disconnected, dispassionate, uh, even when she called at 2 in the morning on an obligatory call to the now acting ambassador in Libya, she never asked what he knew about the attack uh, in, in, her, in her sort of performer call. So I think what you have is somebody who does the symbolism but doesn't do the substance or maybe, just maybe, she knew. What we want to do is we want to get to who knew, when did they know, and who at the highest level is responsible for bad judgment. And I think that's where Under Secretary Kennedy and other key lieutenants, and these are not underlings, these are key lieutenants, that the, uh, this uh, so-called uh, nonpartisan report didn't seem to have any blame above, above low-ranking. We need to find out if high-ranking people, whether career or political, should be held accountable. And that's what we're going to do Who using... specifically? Uh, Kennedy, Mrs. Clinton again? Who else do you want to testify uh, before you? Well, right now, we're going to be uh, having interviews uh, under oath with the two people that headed up the ARB. We're going to get through the questions about what did they find out, how did they reach their conclusions. We also are going to begin interviewing some of the same people that we have been denied up till now that the ARB in interviewed. But before we do public hearings on anyone's request, we're going to do the private research, the good questions, the questions where somebody's given all the time they need to get the answer right, including bringing stacks of paper with them, yeah. because that's the right way to do an investigation. It's not about public shows. It's about preventing this last, from happening again. Last question. Need a quick answer. Should the president release his uh, presidential daily brief uh, from the time prior to and around the time of Benghazi? I think when the American people are told lies, the documents leading to those lies become fair and the president should release all information that his view and an opposing view as to what happened and how did we get misled. Mr. Chairman, thanks for being here.